So for today's video, what I want to do is imagine what the ultimate synthesizer would be. And I've thought about this for a long time, and uh, but for the purposes of today's video, I'm going to suggest three qualities. It has to be polyphonic, has to have variable architecture, and it has to exist apart from the computer. So because it has to exist apart from the computer, we have to rule out the laptop as the ultimate synthesizer. Um, because it has to have a polyphony that rules out modulars. And so we're not really left with a, with a lot of options today. Um, I can think about some historical examples, like the Nord Modular is a really interesting example of a product where you designed patches on a laptop and then downloaded the patches onto the modular for real-time performance. Uh, the Quark Oasis is also a fascinating example where you could have different types of synthesis models, like you could have a subtractive model and layer that with an FM model, um, and that I think qualifies as an idea, you know, getting close to the ultimate synthesizer. But um, I'm going to suggest that now today you can spend $35 to buy a Raspberry Pi and download whatever type of synthesizer you want on the Pi. And there's a number of environments that allow you to do this. You can do it with CSound, you can do it with PD, you can do it with uh, Super Collider. But I'm really excited about the recent developments with Rainbow in Max. And I'm going to take you through the steps that it takes to design a synthesizer in Rainbow and upload it to this Pi. We're going to start in a new Max window. And the first thing we're going to do is create a Rainbow instance. So rainbow, I like to name mine. This is not strictly necessary, but let's just call this like at title, um, let's call this synth. And that'll open up a new window. And this is your rainbow environment. So uh, the first thing that we want to do is we want to get an oscillator. So I'm going to create a sawtooth oscillator. Let's make our window bigger. So let's use an entire screen. So I'll say saw tilde, cool. And we want to connect this to an output. So I'm going to give myself an output with and out uh, tilde, and that'll be output number one. Now, um, I can connect this together, and this is not going to make any noise for two reasons. One, we haven't told the saw oscillator what frequency we're going to be using, and we have no, you, this creates an output, but only to the external rainbow instance, so I still need to connect this to my audio interface in Max. So I'm going to turn the volume down because this is going to be a full scale audio waveform, or actually, there's nothing yet, so I'll just plug that in. Okay, but our volume's still down. So now we need to determine the frequency of this oscillator. And this is a, a kind of tutorial for people who are coming from modular synthesizers, not for people who have come from Max. Uh, so let's create a number box. If you were actually using numbers to, to describe what the frequency of an oscillator is, you'd probably think in terms of hertz. So now let's, let's create an oscillator in hertz. So great, that works, but unfortunately working with Hertz is kind of cumbersome and we're going to have MIDI notes coming into the synthesizer. So we need to convert MIDI notes to a frequency. So uh, instead of a control voltage, which you would use to determine the pitch of an oscillator, because we are determining the pitch of the oscillator with a frequency, we need to then turn that into this uh, expo value. So let's convert this with MIDI to frequency. And this is just going to be a, a message that's going in. So this number box that I'm adding is a MIDI integer, and that will determine the frequency of this oscillator. So let's turn this up just a little bit. Uh, and you can see the MIDI to frequency conversion happening in, in real time. Uh, if I want to connect this to the outside world, I'd use a node in object. But right now, I want to stay within rainbow. Uh, so let's just make a make note object. And what a make note does is it just generates note off messages for uh, note on messages. So if I were to send a, an integer into this, this is going to generate both a, a note on integer and a note off integer. So if I said 60, you can see this number turns into 60, and that is the frequency of that MIDI integer. Um, but the reason I'm making a make note is because we want to uh, eventually add a VCA. But before we do that, let's um, insert a filter in between the output of the saw oscillator and the output. I'm going to use the state variable filter, uh, state variable filter, and then I'll drop this in. Actually, let's turn this up. 
And I'm holding down the shift key while I do this. And that pops that in. And it seems like our oscillator went away, but it's just because the state variable filter, the frequency of this has not been set. So again, like the oscillator, you're setting uh, the value of the cutoff frequency with a frequency. So we can open this up. So if I want to add keyboard tracking to my filter so that the I can change my note to whatever I want and the filter tracks with it, uh, I could just take this MIDI you know, to frequency value off, but I'm not gonna do that. Uh, because I might want to add that to some other values down the line. So I'm going to do this separately. I'm going to create this uh, MTOF. And so now at least when I change my MIDI note number, the cutoff frequency is set at the, the MIDI note number. Um, <clears throat> so I probably want to add some type of way to set an offset there or a bias to what the cutoff frequency actually is. And I want to set that in terms of semitones. I know it sounds counterintuitive, like you want to think that you're doing a frequency, but trust me on this, it's a little bit easier because uh, if I use a pack or a pack object, I'm going to um, make both inlets hot for this addition operation that I'm going to, oops, that I'm going to do. So the output of the intro box goes into the pack. And I'm going to set an offset of this frequency. Let's go ahead and just use a float. Uh, and, and I'm just going to add this to the, the frequency that's coming in that's determining what the frequency of the, fil of the oscillator is, is at. So if I add these two together, uh, I'm going to get uh, this number in semitones, which I will then convert into a frequency. So let's get rid of that. OK, so right now. Uh, if we turn this up, we're going to get this kind of dull tone from the low pass filter mode. But now I can set my cutoff frequency as a bias to that. Uh, to do, oh, we forgot our addition option. Let's add that. Again, I'm using the shift key to drag this in. Okay. Okay, so now, yeah, we can hear a little bit of resonance there. So let's add a number box for resonance. And I'll set that to zero. does still sound like resonance, but that's kind of the nature of this filter. Let's now, let's finish this up. Like we make a complete uh, synthesizer with this. So that means that we have to add a VCA. A VCA is just a multiply. So that's a multiply tilde because this is brought to you in teeny weeny eye strain of vision. And we want an envelope generator for this. So let's use an ADSR to open this up. And I can take this output from here. This is my note. Uh, these are velocities. And so I just want to say, OK, if anything's greater than 0, then that means we're going to fire off this gate uh, that's going to go into this ADSR. Um, let's add some defaults to this ADSR. So like 10 millisecond attack, uh, 200 millisecond uh, decay. The sustain is going to be at 0.9. And then the release, like 500 milliseconds. So now I can click this 60, and oh, nothing happens because the volume's down. There we go. And now I've got an amplifier. Or sorry, I have uh, our VCA working. So let's set this to like 50. All right, so now let's expose this to the outside world by uh, substituting this make note for uh, a note in object. Note in. I'll pick both these up with an option drag and drag them over. Okay. I whoops. Uh, now I think we're ready to start to attach the outside world here. So this is our entire synthesizer. I'm going to close this. Now we're back inside of Max. Um, I need to get, if I hover over this inlet, it says this is a MIDI inlet. So let's add a MIDI in to our, our Max patch here. MIDI in. And uh, that should go into the MIDI inlet. If I command double click on this, this will allow me to set what port I'm going to listen to. Ooh, that's uh, kind of loud, so let's attenuate this a little bit. OK, so now we have, we're able to play it on our keyboard, um, but it's monophonic. But we can change that with uh, one quick little addition. Uh, 
Okay, so I just set the polyphony to eight. Okay, cool. So now we have a polyphonic synthesizer. Uh, the next thing I'd like to do is um, I want to expose some of these controls that we added, specifically the cutoff frequency. I want to be able to uh, change that as a parameter. So let's uh, open this back up. So now with our synthesizer, this is our cutoff frequency, and we're going to add a parameter for that. So add param. And the, the parameter object allows you to define the characteristics of the input. So in this case, uh, we want to name it. So we'll call this parameter cutoff. And we'll give it a range of values. So uh, I'm going to say we're going to go from uh, a semitone offset of uh, let's just start at zero for now, and then we could go up to like 60 additional semitones. Um, and then we could set a default value as well. That value um, is going to be zero. Or actually, no, let's let's do it like one octave up. Um, also, I need to set at min and uh, at max. Okay, so that should expose our parameter control. And this additional information will make... Um, the things that automatically generate user interfaces a little bit more intelligent about what they're doing. So let's see if that works. We can go back into Max, and this inlet is the, the first inlet, and we can use an adder UI, uh, which edits attributes, hence adder UI. And let's see if our parameter here is cutoff. Yeah, cool. So now I can play a note. Oops, well, let's lock the patcher so I can do this, juggle these things simultaneously. Okay, so we made our synthesizer, and now our goal is to get it running on the Pi, because currently it's running on the laptop, and the whole point of this is that it is independent. So I have a Pi, and I have power running to this Pi, and it's currently running, and now I'm going to go back into Max and see if I can find this Pi in the network. Okay, so if I double-click and open this Rainbow instance, uh, we can then see if we have any targets that are available for export. And when I open up this window, I can see that my unit 2 pi is available. So let's see what is here for us. And we've created a new synthesizer, so I'm going to say I want it to run immediately, which means that the, there's no... Out, once it compiles, there'll be no more, you know, th any actions on my part I need to do in order to load it. Uh, so I've run immediately, clicked, and I'm going to change my patch name to, let's call this, like, you know, maybe basic synth. Okay. All right. And that's basically it. And once I'm done, I can click this little compile or export button, and we wait. Um, while we're compiling, I should mention that... Uh, the Pi I have connected to this 20-year-old, 25-year-old MIDI interface. And the MIDI interface is connected to this 35-year-old uh, MIDI controller. I could connect a, a USB controller into this, and, and that would be fine. Um, but uh, because I want the extra range for this, <clears throat> I'm using this 76 key controller. Uh, so it's done compiling, and now I'm going to click this button that says Open Interface. And here we see something completely new. This is the, the graph editor in, in Rainbow. Or actually, it's the Rainbow graph editor is here to help us control compiled instances of Rainbow on the Pi. And you can see here in the corner, it's using the React Flow library. And so if this looks familiar, you've seen some other things that do this. <clears throat> That's why. Okay, so this is the basic synth, and it currently does not have anything connected to the MIDI input. So I'm going to connect. Uh, oh, check this out. Yeah, there is no there is no MIDI output. So the reason this is the case is because I need to actually plug in the MIDI interface because I, I haven't done that yet. So there's nothing. There's no USB plugged in here. So if I find the USB cable, oh, here it is. Find a USB port and plug it in like so. 
instantly we see over here in the graph editor that we've spawned a, a couple more MIDI ports. So I'm going to connect this MIDI port into the input of my synthesizer. It has one output, one audio output, which is displayed here in green. And I'm going to plug that into the output of the Pi. Okay, so MIDI in, audio out. Uh, let's see if this does something. <laughs> I'm sad. Oh, you know what? Um, I have an audio output that I haven't connected. Let's find whatever that is. Here it is. Okay. Connect. Oh, goodness. Hello. Um, it'd be really great if I included a volume control on this, so we'll have to, we'll have to change that. Uh, if I look at my parameters, I just have the cutoff frequency. Maybe if I lower, lower this, you know, it's still overloading. So let's fix it. All right, now remember this is running on the Pi. So I have to actually fix this and then compile it. So if I go back over here into Max, oh, is this where I, yeah. I, I fixed it over here in Max land, remember? Uh, I'm just gonna copy that, that VCA. And it really, you know, it should be fixed over here. And that's why that didn't actually come over. While we're here, uh, since we're editing this and I don't want to compile over and over and over again, um, let's add some parameters for the ADSR. And <laughs> Mac. Uh, let's see, what should we say? Like uh, 500 milliseconds. Oops. I keep doing the same thing. It's because I'm trying to speak over my shoulder while I'm doing this. Okay, attack, uh, decay, decay. <clears throat> Sustain and release. I'm going to need to change these parameters on the sustain, otherwise, we're going to be in a land of sad. Okay, we'll set the maximum to one. All right. Uh, so we've got some volume compensation here. Uh, we've published the cutoff frequency. Let's export this thing again. Okay, so we have the synth and we want to control it. And, you know, the easiest way to actually work with this is to open up the help file for the Rainbow Remote. So I'm going to option click on this. And it's going to, one of the things I like about this help file is that uh, there's this menu down here that auto populates whenever you load it. So you can just say, oh, this is my unit. And it automatically connects to it and then provides all the parameters that are associated with the running instance. So now you can come here and say, I'm going to use an outer UI and connect this to the Rainbow Remote. And remember before we were connecting it to a Rainbow instance that was running locally. And now we can say, all right, we want to control the cutoff frequency. Or we want to uh, get rid of that click at the beginning. Attack. So this is how you can actually program your synthesizer after you've actually made it. Um, the other thing that I, I didn't talk about is that when you have an instance running in here, uh, we can uh, go back to our rainbow instance. When I have this selected, you'll see that if I go to snapshots, uh, the snapshots is making a rainbow snapshot. Like you can make a snapshot of all the adder UIs in a in a max instance with a patcher snapshot but when you select the rainbow instance you can make a rainbow snapshot and when you do that that snapshot travels with the compiled instance of the synthesizer you made so i've <clears throat> made some other synthesizers and devices just to satisfy my own curiosity about what is actually possible so let's go ahead and explore that a little bit so i'm going to i'm going to connect to uh, the web server that's running on the Pi again, and we're still running our basic synthesizer. 
Uh, I have downloaded Manuel Poletti's um, Rainbow Effects, and I've down and I've compiled a few of them and added them. So if I wanted to add a like a delay after this synth, I could come up here and I look for uh, effects because I named it that way. Um, I've got Rotovibe. Hmm. Filter delay. Let's use that. Okay, and this adds an instance, and I'm just going to delete these patch cables and plug them into this stereo instance of an effect. Oops, that does not go there. Okay, so output number one, that's going to... No, that's correct. Now, if, if I want to edit that effect, I just click, whoops, I don't want to open that another tab. Um, I just click on the little gears, and this populates uh, another you know page dynamically that has all the parameters associated with uh, this effect. So one of the things that um, I did was I wanted to know if I could like layer a couple things together. So let's uh, add a piano. And this is a sampled piano I made um, hello, here it is. So if I want to layer these two things together, I can just take the outputs and sum them together here. And then I can have um, a MIDI cable going in from the original output. Um, and then the next thing I wanted to do was like, oh, okay, could I have like, um, could I have a split? So like one part of the keyboard is is one instrument, and uh, this is on my wish list for um, Rainbow Runner is that I could have each device have multiple ports, but for the time being we do have MIDI channel support. So uh, I will add a MIDI splitter, or just just a splitter. And I'm going to put this in between the output of the MIDI interface and the instruments that are receiving it. So here is the input. And then I'll connect these two together. Now the distinction here, because we're using MIDI channels, is we have to find the, the MIDI channel parameter in the synthesizer itself. So there should be a MIDI channel that I added, which is right here at the top. So one is going to be on two. Or the piano, we'll put the piano on channel two, and then the synth we don't have to change because it's already on channel one. Then we come to configure the uh, the splitter itself, and I say uh, where the lower bound for the for top part or for one end of the split is, and then the top end of the bound for the other end for for that end. So right now it's set to sixty or mini note sixty or middle C, and then I could say I want the upper cha channel to go to channel one and the lower channel to go to channel two. So down here, I have just the synth, and then when I reach past middle C, then I also get the piano. Okay, let's add an arpeggiator. So I'll connect the output of the fast lane to the MIDI input, and we'll connect this to the piano. And I think the transport should be on. Pause and make sure that our Rainbow instance is also on. Cool. Let's um, let's do some more uh, interesting configurations. Like if we had this piano, uh, I'll get rid of the filter delay and the basic synth that we made. Let's create something like really like a lush layer. Uh, so I'm going to go to the first subtractive synthesizer I made, which I called Subtractive One, 
which is a simple architecture, but uh, it's designed to be kind of thick sounding. So there's a lot of parameters for randomization. Uh, so I've, I've connected this up and maybe I don't want to connect to the arpeggiator. I want to connect this to uh, just directly to the MIDI input. And the there's a lot of parameters. Um, this is another thing that's going to make presets really nice. So we can come to presets and say, I just want something, uh, a simple patch. And uh, let's hear what we got. Cool. Uh, let's add that with uh, the arpeggiation that we have from our piano. Now here's a situation where I uh, I would like to add like a mixer or something, but this is why it's important to have volume controls on all your instruments. And wow, I wonder if I could search this page. There it is, volume. Oh, I'm I want to actually edit the volume of the piano, not the synthesizer. Piano. Let's change this volume to just a little bit lower and then add some low pass filtering to kind of nudge it down a little bit. Okay, now let's hear this with the piano. I don't think that synth is actually standing up to the piano at all, so uh, let's choose a different preset. Um, how about the strings preset? And then let's also push the piano further back by adding a, um, a plate. That snoring is my daughter. Okay, let's see what that sounds like. I've kind of lost the piano entirely. Oh, <laughs> the reason we lost the piano is, is because the transport's not on. If I wanted to uh, really push the CPU, and so we've got two instruments and uh, one effect, let's see if we can add a shimmer verb because I know this one actually usually will do me in. Come on, you can do it. I wish I could uh, drag these in like I can in Max, like in between the patch cables. All right, let's see. Wow, that sounds nice. seems to be holding up. But it's pretty amazing that all this is running on uh, one Raspberry Pi 4. Uh, I have some other instruments, but um, you can actually, instead of me like pulling this up, you can check it out for yourself by going to my GitHub, where if you find the Rainbox repository, you can download all the instruments that you see in this uh, video and more. Uh, so check that out. <laughs>